Welcome to my third podcast in this series on local disputes for Edexcel Paper 3, Lancastrians, Yorkists and Henry VII. In the last one we looked at the Courtenay Bonville dispute and today we're going to look at a gentry family um, who have a large amount of remaining letters and therefore have been very interesting to historians during this period to figure out um, how national politics affected local lives. So this particular family are of interest to us because they worked incredibly hard at socially climbing uh, during this period and as I said because so many of their letters remain intact to this day and it gives historians a unique perspective onto how local and national politics worked in the 13 and 1400s. So basically in the 13 and 1400s, the Pastons went from being peasants to gentry. By 1440, John Paston I um, had made a good marriage to a woman that basically made him the legal advisor to a local knight in Norfolk. And when this knight died, he left a particular kind of will that says um, it's it's spoken and eventually written down later, not at the time that it's spoken. And this obviously led to a lot of dispute over this will. Lots of people challenged whether this was valid or not. Um, this was obviously contested by members of his family. And also due to um, the problems that were happening around the time. So this was all happening at the time that Edward had taken the throne at the Battle of Towton and therefore there were a lot of local and national problems going along anyway, particularly in the 1460s. So this issue involved um, the Mowbray family who were the Earls of Suffolk and they had a bit of interest in past and controlled land obviously being um, in the vicinity of that. The other family was the Dukes of Norfolk. Now, these two noble families used the situation to basically further their own personal gain at the expense of the weaker families that surrounded them, like the Pastons. In 1461, the Duke of Norfolk seized Keister Castle, and in 1465, the Duke of Suffolk laid claim to two Norfolk manors and had his men attack and rob properties, causing lots of damage there. Pass and actually even ended up in prison over these local disputes in London during the period twice. John Paston I had also had problems during this time uh, with Anthony Woodville. Although he was a, a Yorker supporter of John Paston, Anthony Woodville, or Lord Scales as he is known, laid claim um, to different areas of Paston's land in 1466. We don't know whether this is the Woodville family who were known to be quite ambitious to blame here, but then so were the Pastons, and often the Pastons were as much to blame as anyone else involved. In May 1466, Paston I died and he left an incredibly complicated legal issue that had not been settled to his two sons, both called John. And we this eventually ended up in an actual battle between the Duke of Norfolk and them at Keister Castle and at uh, Caldecott Castle in Suffolk. Keister Castle is in Norfolk. John II, the eldest of Edward's, um, of John's sons, joined Edward's household. And he grew importance during this time. We know this because he's known to have been involved in a jousting tournament with uh, Anthony Woodville, Lord Scales, as well as the king in 1467. So he grew in power and responsibility at that time. And he received during this time confirmation that Keister Castle was officially his. However, although this seemed to solve the problem, it didn't actually as other claimants, the Duke, um, who were had still in legal wranglings at this time, decided to sell their claims to the Duke of Norfolk. So he basically paid to get their interest in this family. When England fell into turmoil in 1469, when Edward lost the throne with Warwick and Clarence's rebellion, Norfolk decided to lay siege to Keister Castle for five weeks, eventually forcing John Passon III to surrender the castle. A year later, John II managed to legally sort out ownership of several manors, including Keister, but Norfolk ignored all this and kept uh, occupying it just the same. 
At this point, John II ma- moved his support to the Lancastrians and that briefly saw Norfolk removed from Kaisa Castle, but there's probably a big mistake. Both Patterson brothers eventually fought on the losing side at the Battle of Barnet in 1471, and Norfolk eventually retook Kaisa quite immediately after that. Only the Patterson's general lack of importance made Edward not really keen on doing any reprisals for their lack of support to him. John II even spent some time working at Calais for the king, and eventually, um, when the Duke of Norfolk died in 1476, the Pastons finally got Keister Castle, although the uh, elder son died due to the plague not long after that fact. So here we have another example, um, spanning mostly Edward the Sixth and Hen- Edward the Fourth, sorry, and Henry the Sixth reigns here, and again where national and local politics really mix in how the lack of control of a king can make matters much much worse thank you for listening to this third podcast in the series the next one is going to be about the re-adoption of uh, edward